Hey guys, a warm welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing Ferrari's latest, greatest GTC4 Lusso, the 2 Plus 2 Grand Tourer. But I'm going to be doing it with a slight difference. You see, a couple of years ago, I bought a 456 GTA with one purpose, and that was to transport me and my two young daughters, nine and six, around in a little bit of style and a little bit of luxury. Well, I should have known better. I bought the cheapest one available in the world and well, it's had a few problems. So my grand plan has not quite come to fruition yet. Uh, I've been spending most of my time fixing all of the little gremlins that that car suffers. Anyway, I thought it would be a great idea to see just how far Ferrari have changed the game in the last 25 years. Let's start off with a walk around tour of this car. I also have in my hand the list price and also all of the options specced up on this Ferrari demo car. And at the end of it, I will tell you the eye-watering price of this car right here. First of all, let's admire the looks. It is simply stunning. It looks amazing in this car and I take my hat off to whoever spec this one up at Ferrari. Look at the wheelbase on this car. It is huge, absolutely mind-blowingly huge. It's like about three big paces between the front and the rear wheel. And that is because the engine effectively sits behind that front axle. Look, the front wheel is actually quite close to the front of this car. Now I've been driving this for the past couple of days and it's quite amazing actually how well this car um, number one can turn for such a big car and number two how well it handles. Let's take a quick trip down memory lane and look at the benchmark Ferrari 456. This one being the GTA model equipped with the automatic gearbox, it was Ferrari's flagship 2 plus 2 of the mid 90s. Externally, we have two very different views, both typical of the eras in which they were designed. From certain angles, I love the elegance of the 456, but it's hard to deny the modern Lusso stunning looks, which certainly win it for me. Let's have a close look at the car and some of those lovely options Ferrari have spec'd on this demo and some of the prices that it's cost. Okay, so first of all, let's start off with the uh, colored calipers there, the gray ones, 864 pound. Carbon fiber front air vents. Now these really do look the business and they are a must in my opinion. 1,680 pounds, carbon fiber sills. That's these things down here. Again, looking very nice indeed. They are just shy of 5,000 pounds. Carbon fiber air diffuser. That will be the front one at, down there. That is 1,632 pounds. Wheel caps. 480 pounds and then our sill is just down here but we also have these kick plates again they do look good indeed they are 1152 pounds uh, the other option here that does look amazing on the car is the 20 inch dark painted forged wheels 3,552 pounds. Just have a guess quickly how much you think this Tricolor badges back here, the Italian flag. It looks good, but 672 pounds, really? And then finally at the back here, we have the black exhaust tips and they are 960 pounds. But I have to admit, it does look rather sexy indeed. They have done a very, very good job of specking this car up. So that is the exterior. A little later on, I will go through some of the uh, prices for the interior, which 
happen to be mind-blowing. Okay, so we've had a little look and admired the outside. Now let me tell you the price of this car. So the base price of the Lusso is £243,000. This car, however, has got quite a few optional extras, as I said. And the final price of this one, £332,000. Almost £90,000 in upgrades. Now, you might think that is bonkers. But let me just tell you one simple fact here. My 456 back in 1997 was 173,588 pounds base price. Now, if you calculate into that inflation, that comes to 318,000 pounds base compared to the 243 for this. And back in 1997, there was still the availability of options on that car. So it would have been quite easy to spec up that 456 with the equivalent of today's inflation money to being more than this car. So pound for pound, they're pretty much similar. Now that we've had a tour of the car and established the basics, including the prices, let's jump inside and see what 25 years has done as a game changer for the driving conditions of these 2 plus 2 GT Ferraris. But before I can do that, I need to make sure I'm wearing the right footwear. Now kindly, Puma, who happen to be Ferrari's sponsor, have provided me with these very cool Ferrari trainers. So I am all hooked up, ready to go. But the cool thing is, they have also given me a load more to give away on my channel. So we have many pairs of these. Uh, we also have a different style and lots of other Puma Ferrari gear to give away. So head on over to my Instagram channel where I will put out the uh, competition where you can win some of these amazing Ferrari Puma goodies for free. Tasty. So how does it feel sat in the driver's seat piloting this Lusso? Well, in comparison to the 456, there really isn't much to compare at all, apart from the high speeds that the cars can do. Other than that, they are chalk and cheese. 25 years has made a huge improvement in development in every area of this car. It's smooth, the gear changes. I'm in auto mode at the moment. It's doing everything for me. I'm just steering and just applying a little bit of gas. And it's a very easy car to drive. Literally, anybody can drive this car. Uh, it's very happy. Unlike most Ferraris uh, of the old era, just to pootle along. I drove it last night uh, through town, about 30, 40 mile an hour. It didn't, didn't complain in the slightest. It really is something you can use all day, every day, in every single driving mode and condition. And it's very surprising, actually, this car is a long car you've got a huge expanse of bonnet out there and yet the turning circle on it i was extremely surprised about last night none of my other ferraris can turn as well as this one handling is phenomenal the suspension setup is amazing we can tweak it with a few settings depending on our driving style our driving mode um, and then we have four-wheel steer that has derived from the TDF. The driving zone on the car is really set up very nicely. The dash, you've got everything there information-wise that you need. That lovely big rev counter in the center of the dash. Your steering wheel has all of the needs 
the basic driving right here at your fingertips. One thing I didn't actually like to start with, it's taken a little while to get used to, is these indicators on the steering wheel. When you're mid-bend like this, you kind of go for this and uh, they're not there it's because they're down the bottom. But having said that, half an hour of driving and you've got used to it. Here's what we're going to do, we're going to take the car out of comfort, let's flick into sport, we're going to take it out of auto mode and then we are going to see just how much of a wolf in sheep's clothing this loose zone really is. A nice straight road in the middle of the countryside, let's test it out. between this car and the 456. The amount of time it takes to get through those gears, reaching those speeds, is incredible in comparison. Absolutely incredible. Not only that, the smoothness of which it gets there. You don't feel the bump on the road, even though I'm in sport mode, we have the suspension system in its normal, is nine comfort, it just drives, sticks to the road, but it doesn't feel over the top, bumpy. Unlike my Stradale, for example, where you literally hear every single stone hit the bottom of the car, no matter where you are in that car, this is the complete opposite end of the scale. I haven't mentioned one thing about this car, we have double glazing here as well. We've closed the windows, so it's not great for you guys to hear the noise this car is making out there when you put your foot down. Like I say, this car can be very, very tame, or it can be very, very much of an absolute animal. And that's what I like about it. to go on a long journey with this one would this be comfortable enough let's say to go down to the beach in or something yeah, like yeah. that back there for you guys yeah, yeah. and you would be quite happy a lot of leg room, lot yeah. of leg room and you got the screen here so this is the ultimate test we have the family with two little kids in the back we have maya who's nine and nicole who is six and nine look and a half. nine and a half okay and look at this loads and loads of leg room there Plenty. We have this. And I even, and if you wanted to charge something, um, you have two chargers. Two chargers like back there. IPads. Perfect. And, and let's compare that to the Ferrari 456. So, girls, how does this feel compared squishy, to the other one? Squishy. Really squishy. So, Nicole has got hardly any leg room back there, and that's with this passenger seat all the way forward. And Maya really, really is not happy because if I put this back, hardly anything at all down there. Um, if you're an adult, you really wouldn't want to have your legs down there. And look at that, that is also with this driver's seat compromised in a forward position. So the Lusso definitely wins the passenger leg room 
and the passenger comfort status, right? Yeah. yeah. The interior of this Lusso really is a special place to be, but that does come at a price. Let me give you just some examples here. So we have got interior carbon fiber door handles, 2,400 pounds. Dashboard air vents in carbon fiber, 1,920 pound. Carbon fiber driving zone with LEDs, 4,320 pounds. Passenger display, 3,360 pounds. Aluminium rev counter, 557 pounds, a bargain. Color upon re request for the Alcantara inserts. Now, one thing I am looking for on this car is the Alcantara inserts. All I can see is these Alcantara wraps around the seat belts. I really can't see any other Alcantara on this car. Anyway, they will cost you £1,152. I don't know where that money went. But the biggest cost of all is this big expanse of glass up here. That will set you back a whopping £11,520. So our grand total to spec out this particular Lusso on the interior alone, including this lovely glass roof and the upgraded premium hi-fi system is an eye-watering 47,263 pounds, which is quite a large sum of money. However, if you can afford to buy a quarter of a million pound Ferrari Lusso, what's an extra 50,000 pound to make it feel that extra bit special every time you sit in this seat and press that button. Let's do a quick comparison on storage space, starting with the 456. Well, you're not gonna get very many suitcases in there, but you have got a bit of space. We've got enough for my little camera bag there, keep my kit in, but mainly for me, I use mine to store my electric skateboard to get me the remainder of my journey home when this 456 constantly breaks down. Let's run a little test. So I've got the middle bit down, I could take these down as well, but I want to see if we can get a full bumper for the 308 in this Ferrari. What do we think? Is it going to go in? What do you think, Mr. Cameraman? Meh. All right. That's in. It's good? Yeah. That's it. All you need when you're restoring old Ferraris, is a Lusso. Plenty of space back here. Brilliant, I'm happy with that. I'm not gonna shut it down because I don't wanna damage anything, but uh, we have proved the point there. Plenty of space. Cool. Now let's open up this gigantic engine cover and expose the money shot. Now, a strange thing that I was not aware of is they offer the Lusso in two different guises. The one we have here is the one you would expect to see, the V12 version, but they also offer a Lusso T, which is the V8 version. But we're gonna to focus today on the V12 lump that we have here. What have we got under this skin? We have a V12 naturally aspirated 6.3 litre engine capable of 0 to 62 miles per hour in 3.4 seconds and an eye-watering top speed of 208 miles per hour and that is in a car that seats four people in style and in comfort now as i said earlier if you look at the wheelbase of this car and check out the front wheels that's the front axle. Look where that engine is. It's way behind. So our weight distribution, all our balance on this car is really, really good. And trust me, I've driven it for the last two days. It's fantastic. We also have at the front here, a separate gearbox. That is for the front area of the car, the front section, front wheels. Uh, it's a 
derivative of the Ferrari FF. Uh, so it's a four wheel drive, but this Lusso comes with its own party trick. We have rear wheel steering on this, which came from the TDF. And so going around corners on this at high speed is pretty amazing. It sticks like glue. The 456 was not too shabby in its heyday. Back in 1995, it was capable of a respectable 185 miles per hour. But that really is where the comparison stops. 436 brake horsepower, rear wheel drive, and a zero to 62 time of 5.5 seconds means it's a full two seconds slower than the Lusso. It's like comparing Linford Christie with Usain Bolt. One thing I like about the Lusso is you have this lovely engine, but you also have two worlds far apart, really, because this is not only capable of just cruising around, but one thing I really like about it is when you start it up, it is not all barky and shouty. Now, I have a Stradale and I have a Testarossa with straight through pipes, and they sound ridiculously loud when you start them up. A little bit too loud because most of the time I end up getting knocks on my door from my neighbors. Now this, when you start it up, it's a little bit more sedate. However, when you want it to make noise, boy, can it do it. Let's see some of the other features that make this Lusso look like the Starship Enterprise compared to the 456. First of all, we have cameras all around the car, front and rear HD cameras, and then we got side cameras, which are very handy for those high curbs. Here we have Ferrari's infotainment system featuring a 10.25 inch HD screen, very nicely finished with clean, crisp edges and looking luxurious amongst the mix of premium leather and carbon interior a big leap forward over the FF model. We've improved insulation from exterior noise achieved via such changes as a 20% more rigid chassis and a 25% quieter climate control system. On the central HD screen, we're able to use a split screen function allowing different views of content simultaneously. For example, sat nav with your 3D maps and your music source of choice, which include Apple CarPlay, radio or music storage. It really has everything and is simple to use. And Ferrari have even thought about the passenger who is able to control and see some nice features by their own dash mounted screen. We have the familiar steering wheel mounted Manatino with various driving modes that guarantee superb drivability in all weather conditions. For the most part though, I found that comfort and sport modes are the ones you're gonna be using 95% of the time. We also have a bumpy road setting, which here in the UK is gonna be used quite often, and it adjusts the dampers, doing a great job soaking up the poor road surface. And then in this car, we have got the lift kit. So we press this button, we got front and rear lift, spec'd up, which is a great little feature because all that diffuser, all of that front spoiler, it is gonna save you a lot of money replacing those, hitting them on speed bumps. and summarize this Ferrari GTC4 Lusso. Well, my original quest was to explain the advances Ferrari have made in the past 25 years compared to this car's great granddad, the Ferrari 456. And really, it's difficult to do that because these cars are so far worlds apart. They are chalk and cheese. This is an absolute joy to drive in every sense of the word. It is easy to drive around town 
and it can quickly change into an absolute beast if you want it to and put a smile on your face. I am very fortunate enough to have owned over 30 Ferraris personally in my uh, 20 year history with the brand and I think really the major question would be would I add one of these to my garage and the answer to that is without a shadow of doubt absolutely yes I would love to do that obviously there's the uh, price to take into account but um, other than that this would be happily parked up in Rattarossa's garage now one of my favorite quotes of all time from my favorite movie, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, is a quote that goes, if you have the means, I strongly recommend one. And when it comes to the Lusso, there is no better quote than to finish this summary of my lovely, perfect experience with this beautiful Ferrari. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. Please give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and if you wanna catch some more behind the scenes footage of this, check out my Instagram account here. Until the next one, thanks very much for watching guys. Ciao for now.